Hi, and welcome everybody to this brief tutorial on using the R exams package and the learning management system OpenOLAT to conduct online exams. We at Universität Innsbruck have uh, decided to use several uh, measures uh, to um, make the exams um, go as similar as possible to, to an exam conducted um, in a classroom. And um, here I'm showing how I can uh, embed these things in my R exams workflow. So I will um, use Swan Declaration first, um, where students have to um, confirm that they are doing the exam alone and only with the tools allowed. Um, and then the second actual exam only starts if students have filled in the uh, Swan Declaration first. Both of these um, uh, tests can be generated um, in our exams and uh, the corresponding learning resources are then imported into uh, the Open OLED system and embedded to a dedicated course for the exam. For illustration, I'm using um, exercises uh, readily available in the R exams package, even though these uh, would typically not be put together into a single exam. But uh, this way, it's easier for you to replicate what I'm doing here. So that's why I'm uh, sticking to the exercises um, available in the package. Okay, the starting point um, is here in my R session where I've already loaded um, an R script that uh, generates these two test resources and in my uh, files you see the um, R markdown um, files that I'm using for, um, for this particular exam. Okay, so um, let's get started with this. The first thing I'm doing is uh, generating the, um, the Swan Declaration online test. This consists just of a single um, exercise and here I'm lo loading the R Markdown version of it. There's only one question that um, is the, the text um, recommended by our legal team and um, then uh, the answer list just consists of a single option saying yes. And uh, in the meta information, we say that this is a single choice exercise and uh, that uh, the single uh, answer option is also the correct answer option. This is important because um, we will make passing this one declaration a prerequisite for starting the actual online exam. So we need a number of points associated with it that uh, students can obtain when uh, filling out the declaration. On uh, the um, uh, our side, we then uh, load the package and then we say exams to open OLED to um, generate uh, the declaration. We just need a single version because um, there's no random element to the Swan declaration. Um, you can get one point for it and also uh, the cut value for passing the exam is uh, one point. The maximum number of attempts is unlimited signaled by the zero which is in fact uh, useful because in our um, trial so far uh, students used more than one attempt to successfully fill out uh, the declaration. Then just for layout I'm omitting the enumeration of the answer options because there is just a single answer option the section title is Swan Declaration, the item title Declaration Form, and otherwise I don't need any descriptions. Okay, and this um, um, has generated, if I'm checking down here, um, has generated a zip file that I can import into Open OLED. Then next, um, I'm um, creating the exam itself. It's a um, list of um, exercise file names here, all in our markdown format. You could also use the R LaTeX format if you wanted to. And this particular uh, exam uses four exercises where each of the four exercises is actually sampled from two or three exercise templates. 
Here, this is a rather mixed bag, but as I said before, I'm using exercises readily available in the package and this was uh, the best um, I thought I could do here. So I'm using four topics here, geography, graphics, inference and derivatives. And um, this is my, uh, my list of um, exercises. And every student will just get one of these uh, templates with randomly generated content. So all of these have some random text blocks or random numbers, random graphics, random R output that gets inserted um, into the exercises. Look at the other video tutorials um, or resources on the webpage if you want to learn more about this. And then I go on uh, to use this exam uh, to generate another uh, exams to open OLED uh, learning resource with it. Here I'm using um, um, 50 random replications. This is what I would typically use for an exam where with about 50 participants and I would increase the random number of replications um, as needed. Of course, it's always a bit tricky to properly calibrate this, that the uh, random replications are large enough to make cheating difficult, but not too large to make anything um, unfair. So this is something we have tested for our real exam in a previous um, uh, self-assessments uh, or uh, formative online tests and so on. And um, for illustration, I'm using one point per exercise here. Again, an unlimited number of attempts to enter the exercises within the exam. We will see that we will only allow one attempt for the overall exam in OpenOLED. The cut value is two. So uh, with two out of four exercises, you pass the exam. The duration um, I'm using uh, here is 60 minutes. Um, so just for illustration purposes. And then I'm using two arguments that are uh, quite important for the random variation. I shuffle the sections. So the four um, items on the four different topics are presented to the students in random order. And importantly, uh, the navigation is linear. So students cannot skip back and forth through the items, but they are forced to answer the items in the order presented to them. So that means with four um, exercises, only about a quarter of the students are in the same section and the same topic at the same time, making cheating a bit more difficult. And you can imagine if you have um, 10 or 20 exercises, this becomes uh, more difficult. For the section titles, um, I'm using uh, the section titles from my list, geography, graphics, and so on. And for the item title, I'm just using a question in order not to give away too much information about the exercise in the title already. Of course, you can make uh, also the section title less informative, or you can make the item title more informative as is uh, suitable for your exam. And again, uh, no descriptions are really needed for these um, exercises. And then you see in the R window uh, below that um, these uh, different uh, items have been generated in different sections and different random replications. And again, zipped uh, into an output file that I can uh, import into, um, into OpenOLED. Okay, so that is what needs to be done um, on the R side. So now let's look um, at uh, the Open OLED um, side. What I will do now is I will create a dedicated course for the exam. And in the uh, course, I will uh, create two online tests, one for the declaration and one for the actual exam. So I'm in my authoring area um, here in Open OLED and I create uh, a new course and um, I will call it uh, our exams uh, open uh, OLED, for example, and create that. I will um, um, make the management of course members uh, manual and import the uh, registered users uh, once they have um, registered through the online system in the university. Then I'm not using uh, any predefined uh, template, but just creating an empty course. 
Here, I would uh, usually enter a brief description about the course saying, this is uh, my online exam taking place on this and that date. Okay, and here we are in this uh, empty course and I'm entering uh, the course editor and uh, typically I will now insert uh, at least um, three um, elements. First, um, I will insert some notifications where I make uh, announcements um, about the exam, um, uh, what uh, the, the exact rules are when it takes place and so on. And then I will insert uh, two online tests, the first one and the second one. And uh, the first one is the Swan Declaration. Um, again, I would typically um, enter a short description saying what needs to be done to uh, fill out this declaration. For the visibility, let's imagine um, I want to uh, conduct the exam on the uh, 18th of May from um, starting from 12 o'clock with one hour of time. Then I would uh, do the following. I would first uh, make the visibility uh, dependent on a certain group. And here I would call the group just participants, uh, for example. And I could also add a short description. And uh, these would be imported later on from the information system uh, of the university. And then I would make this uh, dependent on a certain date. And I said, let's assume we want to do this on the um, uh, 18th of um, May, starting from 12 o'clock. And then I would make the um, Swan Declaration visible already a little bit earlier so that students that enter uh, the course um, can, uh, can already see it. And uh, then I would also um, end it a little bit after um, uh, one o'clock so that uh, students have uh, a little bit of time to fill in the declaration before the one hour for the actual exercise starts. Okay, so let's save this and then we go to the test uh, configuration and um, then um, we, um, we need to import um, the, the test configuration for uh, both our um, uh, online exams here. So I go back to my authoring um, area and I uh, import first uh, the SWAN declaration saying our exams declaration import again i could enter some meta information here and then you see what uh, the swan declaration will um, will look like okay so we have imported that then we also import the actual exam Okay, again, I could enter some meta information here. And then you see uh, the, uh, the four uh, sections that um, are made available to the students here with the informative section titles, but the non-informative item titles, which are just question. You also see that uh, time is now uh, ticking down from uh, one hour, um, the, the maximum amount of time allowed. And you also see that when I'm skipping uh, to a question, I cannot go back to the question before or I cannot skip ahead uh, without explicitly saying so. Um, and uh, this is uh, the linear navigation that I have um, allowed only. Okay, so both of these are imported. So we go back to the course editor and now we can uh, enter the our exams um, declaration first 
this is a maximum score of one. Um, the cut value is also one. I can now set the assessment period and um, I also put this now to the 18th of May and the assessment actually starts at 12 and um, students should have up to one hour but because I want to give them um, um, 15 minutes um, of time um, to fill in the sworn declaration uh, first I'm extending the time window to um, 12 to 13 15 and um, after completing the test the score is shown on the home page that's all right and then um, we can also um, make certain um, adjustments um, to the configuration. We want to use no time limit uh, when we're uh, in this SWAN declaration and uh, we don't want to limit the number of attempts, but we don't need menu navigation and we don't need feedback, for example. So we deselect that. Okay, and uh, then we're done with the SWAN declaration. And then we skip to the next online test, which we make uh, the online exam. Typically, I would enter a detailed description what the rules are for this exam, but I'm skipping this step here. And then I will also make this dependent on the date. Um, so um, we can also make this uh, visible from 11.45 and we can actually make it uh, visible, um, let's say, until the end of the term so that uh, students can still see the exam after they have completed it. We also make this um, dependent on the group, so only the registered participants uh, should see this. And uh, we're also making it dependent on an assessment and only those who passed the SWAN declaration, i.e. filled it out correctly, are allowed to see the actual exam. We could do a similar uh, configuration in the access if we wanted to, but I'm not doing this here. Visibility should be enough. So then we're using the R exams open OLAT uh, exam, and this has a maximum score of four, a cut value of two as we entered it um, on the R side. Then we're setting the assessment period. Again, we're being warned that um, students can only um, do the assessment during this period then. But this is of course what we attend. And then we make this again one hour plus 15 minutes so that students that start within the first 15 minutes get the 60 minutes um, um, that we have um, declared as the time limit within the exam and those that start later than 12.15 um, have to finish by 13.15. We show uh, the score on the test page. We also show the results uh, on the test page. We can also make this depending on a date um, and start only when everybody is finished with the exam and we know everybody needs to be finished by 13.15 because that's uh, the time we have entered here. So only when all students are finished, they can see the detailed summary again to prevent uh, cheating, prevent sharing exercises in uh, social media, for example. But after that, I'm showing uh, the full overview with all details of the exam. That's what I checked here. Then in the um, options, we adjust the configuration uh, a bit. The time limit is already configured in the learning resource itself. Then we want to limit the number of attempts. Um, so at most, the student can take the overall exam once. And um, then we, um, in this case, we show the menu navigation, although the menu navigation uh, cannot be used it shows the section titles, uh, which might be um, a piece of information I want to share with the students. And then I don't show feedback within the exam um, 
students have to enter their results and uh, see only the feedback at the very end of everything. Okay, and then we're done. And then we can publish uh, this course and finish it and uh, leave our course editor. And as you see, everything on the starting page is still uh, pretty much naked because I have skipped entering uh, all the descriptions. This is something I should do now. But um, if I start um, or want to start uh, the exam now, I can already see what this looks like for the students. So once they, um, they see the course, um, um, they can um, and see this element, they know in which time window they may take the Swan Declaration. And once they fill this in, they uh, can also see the online exam and see they have one attempt for it and this time window and a maximum of one hour uh, to complete it. Okay, and uh, that's it. And um, uh, with this, we conduct our uh, online exams. Thank you.